at 11, a dead body found near a retail store just hours ago. What we're still learning. It's Halloween Eve. Little ones are getting ready to dress up and go door to door. How to stay safe tomorrow night. We rely on the community to make meals for all of these people each night. So 50 to 70 people every night during the winter shelter season. A safe space in Chico is opening their doors to those who need it most. How donations can help get them through a harsh winter. The North State's news starts right now. Live, local, breaking news you can trust. This is the North State's News at 11. Good evening, North State. We're glad you can join us this Monday night. I'm Ariana Martinez. Shasta County supervisors are considering giving themselves a 65% pay raise. The proposal is on the agenda for tomorrow's meeting. The staff report shows the board has had no pay increases since 20, 2002, and in fact, they took a slight cut during the Great Recession. Their monthly pay would go from less than $4,500 a month now to more than $7,300 a month, plus a $5,000 annual vehicle allowance. The budget would be increased by almost $250,000 a year, not counting cost of living raises. Supervisor Kevin Cry, target of a recall is is against it. I'm opposed to this because the, the timing is terrible. I mean, right now with inflation and everything else, our, our county employees are just getting crushed, uh, like many of them, like much of America. And I think the most egregious thing that I have always read going back for years is when politicians give themselves a race. And uh, this is the absolute worst time ever to do it. You can read his news release on our website. Also on the agenda, a discussion about the heart the Heart Intercivic Voting Machines, renaming the Citizens Election Advisory Committee to commission getting it broader powers and putting a question on the March ballot, asking voters if they would like to change Shasta County from a general law to a character county. Finally, California Secretary of State Shirley Weber sent a letter dated Friday to the Board of County Clerk and Registrar of Voters Kathy Darling Allen saying, quote, Unfounded theory that Shasta County is grandfathered in ahead of the passage of AB 969 and may still conduct a hand counting during elections is wholly without merit and has no basis in law, end quote. She says her official her office will take any actions necessary to ensure all elections are conducted in accordance with state law. That letter is on KRCRTV.com as well. The meeting starts tomorrow at 9 in the morning. The administration building on court Street in Reading. Police found a dead body near a Walmart in Chico this afternoon. Chico police says officers were called to the 2000 block on Forest Avenue where they found a dead man. Officers say the death does not appear to be suspicious. His name is being withheld for now. In Humboldt County, Jariah Zion was arrested for firing a gun in a neighborhood near Arcata Saturday morning. A neighbor told deputies he was possibly having a mental health episode. Zion was found near Sequoia Avenue in Rio Dell later in the day, then taken into custody. Three loaded semi-automatic rifles, high-capacity magazines, a 12-gauge shotgun, ammunition, pills, and cocaine were found in his car. Nobody was injured. Zion was booked into jail on multiple charges. Dressing up, getting loose, and trick-or-treating are all things that will play out tomorrow, although it's crucial to take safety precautions. The North State's new Sophia Berenzma spoke with community members about their safety concerns along with recommendations to keep kids safe. Always be careful of, you know, who, what house you go to or who comes up to you or who's at the door and like what they ask you or offer you. The National Safety Council says that an adult should be accompanying young children. They should also teach children to never enter a stranger's home or car. Children should also travel in familiar, well-lit areas and stick with friends. Candy is one of the best parts of the scary and sweet holiday. The FDA recommends that you don't eat candy until it has been inspected at home. And in case of a food allergy, make sure you check the labels and inspect commercially wrapped treats for signs of tampering. Make sure you look both ways before crossing the street, and it's always a good idea to have your parents check your candy before you start eating it. 
The National Highway Traffic and Safety Administration also has safety tips for drivers. Be alert of trick-or-treaters and slow down and continue to scan the road in areas where they are likely to be more pedestrians on the roads and in places where they are not expected. For pedestrians, walk on a sidewalk if one is available and use crosswalks. Before the Halloween festivities begin, create a buddy system to get each other home safely and prevent walking alone. Reporting in Reading, Sophia Brunsma, The North States News. For more on Halloween safety tips, you can visit our website, krcrtv.com. And now let's check in with First Alert Meteorologist Brian Schofield. Brian, it started out chilly this morning, but it actually warmed up quite nicely. We've been very blessed the first half of this week. Incredible stuff. Latter half will be a different story, but at least it's dry for all those outdoor plans, right? Tomorrow, big day tomorrow, candy grabbing day. I'll tell you that. Grab some for me, please. A 76 in Reading today, Red Bluff 73. Some 60s and some upper elevations, but that's actually a pretty nice temperature for this time of year. Not bad. Our normal high 72 hit 70 in Chico and uh, 72 for Oroville. Not bad at all. All right, we've got some higher thin clouds working their way in. These are not rain bearing clouds. I've been saying that throughout the day, just so you know. They'll cruise on in, but they're not going to mean much for us. Um, maybe make for a good sunset if they thicken up enough. You've seen some really great ones lately, but all that moisture stays offshore there. Okay, here's the setup. Oh, look at the kids. They decorated the house for Halloween there. Not bad at all. Let's see what's around. Let's just, just kind of take a look at the forecast. We know it's going to be dry. Dry as a... Did you see that bone? Okay, you just want to make sure you saw that. 74 degrees, not bad. Uh, looking at our heads up or heads off, I guess that would be for Halloween, wouldn't it be? Something like that. Uh, looking good Tuesday. Cooler days, unsettled pattern on the way. That means more rain in the forecast for several days worth in your first alert weather coming up. Safe Space Chico is gearing up for the drop in temperatures. They're looking for donations as they prepare to open their winter shelter in a few weeks. They say they're the lowest barrier shelter in Chico, serving people who otherwise would not have any other place to stay in the winter. Safe Space says they could use donations like blankets, sleeping bags, tarps, and coats. In addition to donations, they always accept new volunteers, including people who can help prepare meals. We rely on the community to make meals for all of these people each night, so that's amazing. Like Chico puts together dinner for 50 to 70 people every night during the winter shelter season. Wow. Chase Space has been doing this for, you know, seven or eight years at this point, um, so we run a pretty good operation. You can make donations at their office at 1907 Mangrove Avenue or visit our website, krcrtv.com, for more information. Employees with the city of Chico cleared several encampments in Butte County. Public Works says the camps at Alba and White Avenue, Little Chico Creek and Sycamore Creek have been cleared. Maintenance crews removed 11 tons of trash during the cleanup. There was also a control burn in Butte County, which started this morning. You might have seen smoke throughout the day. This was the Loafer Creek Recreation Area. Cal Fire says crews finished burning around 530 this evening. They were patrolling for a few hours after as a safety precaution. Fire resilience has become a topic of conversation after the 2018 campfire. The North States News' Hannah Gutierrez tells us what they're implementing in Paradise. Paradise. They have been the most proactive local jurisdiction right now, uh, especially in California. When it comes to the 2018 campfire not only took away many of the homes in the town of Paradise, but burned many commercial buildings and businesses. As the town continues to rebuild, the significance of fire resilient buildings is more important than ever. Although commercial buildings vary in infrastructure from homes, the town of Paradise has made strides towards mitigating wildfires. The Insurance Institute for Business and Home Safety has begun testing their provisions created after events like the campfire that show how taking steps and creating infrastructure that is fire resilient can prevent another incident like the campfire. And, and as we start to learn more of the science of how this all intertwines, it's going to get to the point where if we can get to 50% of the community has these mitigation actions, 60, 70, our chances of these conflagration events start to go way down. We either slow the fire spread itself or we stop it all together because our community has become a fuel break, not a fuel source. And that's really the key as we look ahead. Experiments like this that show how a fire prepared infrastructure can hold up in the event of a wildfire has been vital in establishing provisions for commercial buildings, especially in places like Paradise. 
Keeping the five feet from the property clear of non-combustible items can decrease the spread of a fire even in commercial buildings. Businesses like restaurants and warehouses are more important in following safety provisions to prevent the spread of fires from businesses to homes. As we've you know, made that progress on our building code since the campfire in paradise, the one hope is those provisions that, and steps that have been taken are going to work. As the town continues its efforts to rebuild what was lost, there is one thing IBHS wants the citizens of Paradise to know. The idea that you can do something, that alone is probably the biggest driver of hope and positivity that you don't necessarily see in other places. For more information on IBHS and wildfire preparedness, check out our website at krcrtv.com. For now, reporting in Chico, Hanna Gutierrez, The North States News. After the break, the Biden administration announcing funding for transmission lines. The federal government is investing money to combat hate crimes in small communities. Plus, you might want to throw out your eye drops. The recall from the FDA. Big stories, local impacts, next. Here's a live look from our Hasselrood Law Sky Cam. It is a chilly night, but it was a beautiful day. Look at our full forecast when we come back. Welcome back. It's time for big stories making local impacts. The Biden administration says it will spend $1.3 billion of new federal funding to help create three new massive electrical transmission lines. It's a bid to improve the nation's power grid by getting more renewable energy into American homes and businesses. Administration officials say the lines will bring a significant amount of new wind, solar and Canadian hydropower onto the grid. It would be enough extra electrical capacity to power around 3 million homes. The federal government is investing more money in combating hate crimes. The Department of Justice announced $38 million in grants to help local communities. The grants include more than $8 million to community-based organizations, $17 million to state and local law enforcement, with $2 million dedicated for hate crime prevention efforts. The FDA is warning people not to buy certain eyedrop products due to the possible risk of infection, which could result in partial vision loss or blindness. They are marketed under the brands CVS Health, Leader, Rugby, Rite Aid, Target, Up and Up, and Velocity Pharma. The agency recommended the manufacturer of the products recall all lots last week. Investigators found unsanitary conditions in the manufacturing facility where critical drug production areas tested positive for bacteria. Temperatures really coming down after midweek. That's when we start to see some of the better chances for rain, and that extends through the weekend. That's all coming up in your first alert forecast. After the break, California Faculty Association may be going on strike, the deadline to make a deal. Plus, the housing crisis continues on the North Coast, how having a safe space to park for the night can help. Arcata City leaders voting to make or break the shelter program next. Members of the California Faculty Association voted 95% in favor of authorizing a strike if the California State University does not offer a contract meeting the needs of its workers. The North State's News' Sophie Lincoln spoke with teachers along with a representative with the CSU system to see where both sides stand right now. About 30,000 professors, lecturers, and other staff at the 23 California State University campuses could go on strike if the CSU and the California Faculty Association do not come to an agreement on pay, benefits, and working conditions. We are willing to withhold our labor if CSU management continues to say no to investing their money where it matters. This strike vote authorization comes as the CFA and the CSU near the end of their current statutory bargaining process to negotiate a new contract for workers. We always get to this point and then um, we get a more, more serious negotiation from management to um, give us what we deserve. In a statement provided to the North States News, Public Information Officer for the CSU Office of the Chancellor, Amy Bentley-Smith, writes in part, quote, 
The approval of the strike vote gives CFA's leadership the authority to initiate a strike or other concerted activities in the event that the parties do not reach an agreement at the conclusion of the statutory impasse procedure, but does not guarantee CFA members will go on strike, end quote. According to CFA Senior Field Representative Maureen Loughran, the hope is to come to an agreement with the CSU and avoid a strike. But if by the end of the statutory process, the CSU is unable to provide a contract that meets workers' needs, they will strike. We're very hopeful. We hold out hope, of course, that the the process of bargaining will produce a settlement and that we won't have to go on strike. Before workers can go on strike, a fact-finding report must be completed to finish the statutory bargaining process. Then the CSU has 10 days to decide whether to make a new offer. It's time to chime. We're staying out on the North Coast with this lovely picture of the sun rising in Cape Town. This was submitted by Debbie Cook, a frequent submitter. Thank you so much, Debbie, for sending this in. We always love to see those sunsets, sunrises, all the kinds of weather out there. Or the moon. And the moon. All kinds of things, There's Brian. There's flying around here. Let me just... <laughs> Especially when the sun is still shining a little bit because I know it's going to change picture. for us right. here soon, right? Yeah, yeah. And keep sending in those pictures. And actually send in those... Halloween pictures of everyone having a good time. If you can, if you want, if you want to, keep it clean. <laughs> All right, take a look. It's looking pretty good for tonight. Not bad. 46 uh, currently. It's a chilly one over at the sundial right now. I'll tell you. Uh, area wind. I'm showing this off because this weekend, 40 plus miles per hour winds. No joke. We were watching them. Some areas maybe kept it around 25, 30, but still a calm now. So looking good. Calm for tomorrow night. Stirred up the smoke forecast pretty well, so you can see over my shoulder, uh, even through midweek, we're okay. It's in the light category. It's still there. It's not entirely cleared out like some areas are showing, but throw down uh, satellite radar composites, some higher thin clouds working in. Oftentimes, these portend to a bigger system on the way, and I guess that would make some sense. But in the meantime, we're not looking at any wet weather for Halloween. Not at all. It's just not going to happen. As a matter of fact, it takes its time to get here. Even Wednesday looks pretty good. And then here we go. Aside from throwing clouds in, Thursday's when we actually bring in some wet weather. Mother Nature has some other plans. She's got guts. Can you see I'm really trying to work these uh, puns uh, as much as I can? Anything, if I can push them in to these forecasts. Either way, you can see through the weekend we start to ramp up chances for some moisture right there. It hits the coast pretty well, so really Del Norte County and Southern Oregon have a better chance. And then we start to see a little more area wide as we get into the next few days thereafter. So this is why we think it's an unsettled pattern coming in. The first shot of rain coming in for Thursday is not going to be a big deal. But you keep adding it up with all of this. We moisten the atmosphere real well. And then we'll have a better shot of getting some decent rainfall across the area. So for the coast, Halloween once again goes off without a hitch. No big deal there. 60s continue. We're still kind of broad brushing the idea that each day we have a chance at some showers, but that doesn't mean a washout each day. And I want to explain that because it certainly looks like, oh my, my goodness, right? What's going on there? Not just drizzle, although we have a good chance, at, especially through the weekend and early next week, mainly to get some good showers there. 40s turn into 50s for lows and 60s, of course, for highs. For tonight, yeah, you know, with relatively clear skies and certainly those calm winds, 38 Shingletown, that's an easy number to hit for tonight. 49 uh, Paradise, 38 Willows. We see some 40s across the valley, but barely that. And this morning, we were 30s in many areas across the valley. And uh, Hayfork, I think you were in the teens this morning. I think you were 19 this morning. So, you know, maybe I'm, I need to push that number down a little bit more. But either way, uh, we know we got 70s coming in for a few days. Wednesday actually might even be the warmer of the two. Either way, that's a good day coming up. Overnight lows right around 40, as we said. Uh, but then they'll warm up quite a bit, and then we start to bring in the chances for rain. Once again, light on Thursday, if at all, and a little bit of Friday as well, and then some through Saturday. Get a little break on Sunday before we ramp up later Sunday into Monday. But the temperatures do fall from there, as you can see. Normals, those have even dropped a little bit, 72 for the normal high for Reading. Uh, normal low is 46, so we're getting much closer to normal, and then obviously below. So we actually should be seeing 70s, but not every Halloween do we see 70s. So there you go. Uh, definitely seeing the temperature is still lower, but not as much for Chico and not as much chances for that same great rainfall because most of it does stay in the northern portions of the North State. But either way, 40s turn into 50s for lows, 60s for afternoon highs. Next week stays a little cooler. I looked at the long range forecast too, and it does look like it's a cool down and not uh, certainly a warm up after this little cool down here. It looks like we're going to stay down with those temperatures into the 60s, but go out and enjoy tomorrow. All right, back to you.
Thank you, Brian. The city of Arcata will have their council meeting on Tuesday. The North States News Radio Gato tells us what the city's shelter crisis is and what will be discussed tomorrow. People in Arcata are experiencing a housing crisis, leaving many people in the city without a home. With the help of the Arcata House Partnership, people who live in their cars can find a safe parking space. Since 2022, the city funds the Arcata House Partnership, which runs a safe parking program for residents who live out of their cars in Arcata. It is open for those who are literally homeless. They must have a registered, operational, and insured vehicle. At this site, residents are able to safely park their cars while receiving services. The program provides charging stations, bathrooms, and meals. Changing regulations to provide more shelters for homeless people would be possible with this declaration. The declaration would also make it easier to receive state funding, which the city council recommends being adopted. It could be extended or repealed at any time. There will be no cost associated with the declaration, but it will, could result in more funding for housing projects. To learn more about the Safe Parking Program, please visit our website, krcrtv.com. Reporting in Arcata, Rudy Aguado, The North States News. After the break, the Pelicans lost big tonight. West Coast Scouting Report, next. Scouting Report is sponsored by Toyota. The Warriors continue to win on the road. This time so far, they lost their first game at home, but won their last three. Tonight, they played the New Orleans Pelicans. That's where we start our West Coast Scouting Report. Chris Paul deep into the clock. That right hand. Yeah, he's going up on the follow-up. And he's killing him. Where he started his career back in 2000. Steph Curry led the game with a whopping 42 points, and Draymond Green recovered from his ankle injury. He was back on the court. The team is proving to play very well together. So far, Warriors won 130-102. to The Warriors will host the Sacramento Kings on Wednesday at 7 in the evening. After the break, it's the night before Halloween. How some Reading residents are dressing up for the spooktacular event next. Eve, which means it's time to start finalizing your costumes or our reporter Sophia Burisma spoke with a few people today at the Spirit Halloween store and reading to see what creative costumes some people will be wearing. And I'm going to be the Wicked Witch from the West from ha uh, Wizard of Oz. I'm going to be Cupid. I'm going to be a sloth. I'm not going to be anything. My name is Emily, E-M-I-L-Y, and I'm, I'm going to be a corn dog. <laughs> I absolutely love that one. I love the creativity. Before we go tonight, actually, I wanted to say that, you know, the parking lot was pretty full. There was a lot of people getting some last minute things. There's a shot of that right there. Look, almost every stall is full right there, getting the last minute Halloween yeah, costumes. Too, yeah. yeah, it is. That vibe. <laughs> right? Uh, but I love the creativity. You, I'll have to make sure to take a picture of Jackson and I. He's going to be a little gentleman. I have a little flapper girl costume. I'll try and get that Which picture. Which one is Jackson going to wear? The flapper girl? Or the... <laughs> Okay. He's going to be the gentleman. He's oh, got a oh, nice little yeah, tuxedo, a little bow tie with little flappers. Oh, it's it's so be. cute. Okay. I'll try and get a picture during dinner break tomorrow. I'm so boring we'll compared to everyone in this building. You know, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to wear a suit tomorrow. <laughs> you know, it, it's not going to be orange either way. All right. You know, maybe I'll find a tie. I have to dig up an old Halloween tie. I don't know. Either way, 70s continue, and uh, I'll tell you, you know, it's really special to have this kind of weather across the U.S. Not everyone's getting this great weather. Some folks are doing pretty well, but either way, got those 70s. We'll bring in some higher thin clouds. We'll actually do these 70s for another day or two, and then they are gone for a little bit, but not quite. I mean, we're dropping the temperatures down and bringing in a little moisture. Back to you. I always love that sunshine. Soak it in mm -hmm. while we got it. Every time I like mm -hmm. to say that. Have a safe Halloween to no tomorrow night and thank you for watching KRCR News Channel 7 at 11. Jimmy Kimmel is up next.